evening, everyone. Yep. Today is Monday, the 15th of April, 2019. I'd like to introduce this evening's speaker. Sue Kunda will be putting the New Zealand back into Anzac. And they introduced conscription in 1916 to ensure that New Zealand could supply the number of soldiers that were actually required to support the war effort. Um, and this is just a little bit of a graph to give you a feel for how many volunteers the New Zealanders got and how many they actually conscripted during the period of, the, of World War I. So, even though they had to introduce conscription to try and get the numbers they needed, there were only 19,500 that were actually conscripted. The vast majority of New Zealand forces were actually volunteers in World War I. Australia tried in both 1916 and 1917 to um, also introduce conscription, um, but the, both plebiscites actually failed. So. Um, I think that, yeah, very, very close. It was very, very close, um, but they did actually fail. Um, a little bit about the lemon squeezer hat. Do you know what the lemon squeezer hat is? So the traditional New Zealand hat, um, known as the lemon squeezer hat. And um, apparently it was introduced by a guy, William George Malone, who was uh, one of New Zealand's outstanding soldiers in the Gallipoli campaign. And the design is supposed to mirror the outline of Mount Taranaki in New Zealand, obviously, and also very practically allowed for the rain running off. So it's a very iconic um, hat that the, that the New Zealanders wore. Now, the NZF and the um, Australian forces combined for ANZAC Day, for the, for the 25th of April uh, 1915. And that's, that's when we got the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, the ANZAC. Um, and the ANZACs, as you know, landed at Gallipoli, along with other, other Allied forces, on the 25th of April 1915. The, the aim was to capture Constantinople, uh, the capital of what was known then as the Ottoman Empire, and uh, as the Ottomans were actually the allies of the Germans. So the aim was to take Constantinople. The aim also was that it was going to be a bold and quick strike. Eight months later, <laughs> They finally, it, the, the strike finally came to an end, but it did drag on considerably longer than they, they'd anticipated. Um, in that, um, in that uh, landing at Gallipoli, um, and in this effort to capture Constantinople, 
2,721 New Zealand soldiers died, along with 8,709 Australian soldiers. What came out of that whole Gallipoli experience um, and the way that the Australian and New Zealand the Anzacs um, performed um, has become known over time as the Anzac spirit. Um, because the Anzac soldiers were described as having endurance, courage, ingenuity, good humour, larrikinism, and mateship. These were the sort of the, the feeling that the other Allied soldiers got about the New Zealand and the Australian soldiers. They were also seen as being innocent, fit, stoical, and laconic. And also irreverent, egalitarian, and disdainful of the British class differences. <laughs> so this is the whole sort of character that people were feeling of the, of the soldiers that were, that were there at, uh, uh, in Gallipoli in 1915. And it's been said a lot since that this has been felt to be almost the birth of the nations of New Zealand and, uh, and Australia. Obviously not the birth of the nation itself, but the, the, the moment of the nationhood or character of Australia and New Zealand <coughs> is epitomised in the Anzac spirit and um, with it only coming 14 years after, after Federation. So if, if people think about an Australian character and you go back to some of these things, this is what people see as being Australian and New Zealand character that came out of that, uh, that Anzac and Gallipoli. Just a few interesting factets about Anzac Day. Officially named Anzac Day in 1916. Um, it became a public holiday in New Zealand in 1920. Um, it became a public holiday in all states of Australia by 1927. It took a little while to filter in through all the different states. The popularity sank quite considerably during the 50s, 60s and 70s. Do you, can you think why? Yeah. Yeah. Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam. Especially in Australia. It was, um, there was a lot of uh, anti-Vietnam campaigning going on during the 60s and 70s. Um, and uh, the Anzac Day was an opportunity for the anti-Vietnam campaigners to, to protest. So um, Anzac Day was really not particularly popular. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Now, so the 50s was more in New Zealand um, that it became that it was not particularly popular. And the reason in New Zealand was because um, there were very strict laws about what you could sell in terms of alcohol and what you could, uh, and what you could have in, happening in terms of sport and entertainment. So the New Zealanders were not happy that Anzac Day meant that they couldn't drink and have as much entertainment as they would like. So the, eventually the rules were changed, the laws were changed and it opened up a lot more. Um, but that's why in the 50s it wasn't particularly popular in, in New Zealand. Um, then there was a revival in the 90s. Um, a lot was helped by Bob Hawke, um, who was the first Prime Minister to actually go to Gallipoli. Um, and, there was a, and then that was continued by John Howard. So there was a real revival of the whole uh, spirit of the Anzacs. And, uh, and uh, now it's become more of a a ceremonial occasion, not just to remember Gallipoli, but also to remember all of those who have fought and lost their lives for their country in all wars and conflicts. So it's a recognition of Vietnam, of, of if you went to Iraq now, if you were in World War II, World War I, any of the wars that have taken place and people have lost their lives, then Anzac Day now covers and looks at all of those in a, in a very reflective way. Um, now, someone last year apparently said to uh, Mary Louise, why isn't New Zealand recognised in Anzac Day in Mayland? Why there's no reference made towards it? So this year, um, 
Mary Louise in particular has been looking at ways that we can bring a bit of New Zealand back into Anzac Day, in, well not back, but into Anzac Day in uh, Maylands. And one of the things that, um, we, we, the main thing that we've got happening this year is that we have two World War I poems, um, both written by New Zealanders, and they're actually being read by a New Zealander. Um, so we have this one, which is literally two lines, Inside each trench, the sound of prayer. Inside each prayer, the sound of digging. Mm -hmm. And then there's one that's, um, I haven't put this whole one up because there's quite a few verses. Um, but this is written as a, a tribute to the Kiwi nurses. Um, Young man, you ask me who I am and why I wear this faded yellow ribbon. I am the woman who held your dying uncle's hand and wrote a letter once that broke your grandma's heart. I am she who met the dust off at the door and carried bloodied, broken bodies through to triage. Um, so those are the two poems that are being read are, as I said, New Zealand poems and are being read by a New Zealander. This, um, this second one, Sister, um, probably has about another six verses, but I thought you will get to hear it when you go to the Anzac service <laughs> at 8.30, obviously on the 25th of April, at the Cenotaph next to the old police station. And uh, there will be Anzac biscuits, tea and coffee will also be served for you. Okay.